Hi everyone, Karen Conrad here. So we've learned that we have a God-given purpose. We've talked about how to discover our purpose. Today, you are going to learn about the promises that God has made to help you fulfill your purpose. You don't want to miss this. Thank you for joining me today on Vision to Reality. We are in a series called The Promise of Purpose, and it's based on my new book that just came out, The Promise of Purpose. And I really am excited about what we're going to talk about today. The reason is I'm all about like, yes, God, I want to dream big. Give me your vision. But it can actually be discouraging if we don't have an understanding that God has a plan and an empowerment to help us to reach our destiny and our God-given purpose. So I love this about the nature of God. He wants us to dream big like he dreams. He wants us to see things the way he sees them, our potential, the gifts and talents that he knows he put in us. And then he comes alongside and he says, and I'm going to help you. I'm going to empower you. And he went to great lengths to help us to understand all the blessings and the promises that we already have because of what Jesus did. God speaks purpose over our life. He sees you and he sees me. And he wants us to receive that beautiful vision and destiny that he has for our life and to understand that we don't have to struggle to be good enough to actually make that happen or bring that destiny to pass. He wants us to spend time understanding that the blessing has already been put in you and put in me to walk this out. So I want to share with you uh, some scriptures that's going to set the stage for this empowerment. Uh, I have got everything listed in here based on the blessings of Abraham that I could find to help us to be encouraged and empowered to reach our purpose. And I'm going to start with this scripture. It's Proverbs 3, 4, and this is out of the New King James. And it says this, And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Do you know that God has already blessed you and blessed me and he's given us favor? Favor is a really interesting study. It gives us a supernatural, you might say, edge (laughs) or an uncommon advantage might be a better way to say that. And it's not because of you and I, it's because of us receiving what Jesus did. And as we live for God, which you are doing, or you wouldn't be watching this program, as we are pursuing his purpose for our life, favor is attracted to us. Favor comes and joins with us to help us to fulfill our purpose. Favor is one of those things that could be a study all on its own, and we don't have time for that today, but I do want to touch on a couple things that I think will be very helpful for you. When we are working in the world, or maybe we want to accomplish something, and we're not aware of these blessings, or or maybe someone that doesn't have a relationship with the Lord, or, or maybe just hasn't been uh, told or doesn't understand the grace and Uh, the things that Jesus already provided for us, the way that the world teaches us, and I really saw this a lot when I was in business, is you want to get ahead of other people. You want to find that right time maybe to meet with a boss or someone that might be able to help further us in some way. 
And a lot of times the reason we do that when we're in the world is we want to find favor with that person. One of the things that my mentor, Billy Epperhart, shares is that you don't want to pound a door down. You don't want to force your way into something. You want to watch for where the door opens. And in other words, what is showing up at your doorstep? In that, we can trust and know that that favor is going to open the right doors. It's going to close the doors that needs to be closed but it's also going to give us that favor or that entrance point, or it might even be the attention of somebody that is in that position to maybe help us move forward in the plan that God has for us. But there's a very, very big difference with this. We want to cooperate with God as we pursue our destiny and our purpose, but we want to allow his blessing his way of doing things to function in our life so that we are not getting out ahead of God or we're not trying to force something outside of its timing. Favor is one of those things that is given to us because of our relationship with Jesus. It's Jesus that has a favor and he has graciously brought us in to all the blessings of Abraham, which we're gonna talk about at length today, and all the blessings that Jesus died to give us. So when we pursue our purpose, we make that decision that I'm going to go for it with the dreams that God has put in my heart. I'm going to uh, take steps to move forward towards that destiny that I know he has for me. It is going to require favor. So many things happen through relationships and God's designed it that way. But let's compare a godly favor relationship with a worldly one. With God, favor is something that I humbly receive. Meaning if I see somebody that I feel can get me to where I want to go, I don't have a heart of, oh my goodness, if I can just get to that person and talk to them And let's see if I can convince them to help me, right? That's how the world functions. But favor with God is, Lord, I'm trusting in you. You put this person in my path. Uh, You know what? What would you have me do? I want to seek you, Lord. And if this is a person that I'm to be connected with, I'm going to trust you to bring that relationship to me rather than me trying to force a door down or try to, you know, uh, get myself in an office or maybe even corner somebody in a conversation with a plan of trying to make sure they know who I am and, and know what I'm doing. You know, the story of Abraham and Sarah, there's so many things to look at in that story, so many lessons to learn with, with how they live their life. But I want to start here in that story and bring it back to where did they actually understand or hear first about the purpose that God had in their life. And so um, we're going to start here. The blessings of Abraham, first of all, are vast and far reaching. God has already blessed your family. He's blessed your name and he's blessed your children. He also promises protection for us provision, and authority. So that's an understanding that when we walk into our purpose in this journey towards our destiny, those are some things that have already been given to us. Do you know that just brings a lot of peace to me. When I read that, and I'm going to read a couple of them again, I want to make sure you get this. God has already blessed your family. He's blessed your name. He's blessed your children. He promises protection, provision, and authority. So if I've already got those promises, I don't need to think about or worry about how I'm going to attain these things because he's already given it to me. It's like that example, if somebody's given you a gift and you would keep going back to them and asking them, like, please, will you will you give me this gift? And they're like, I already gave it to you. You already have it. It would be like us going to God and continuing to ask him for things 
that he would say, you know what? I've already given that to you. When we receive a gift, when we receive a blessing, we receive it, right? So there is an active part for us to grab hold of these things, these blessings uh, that he has given us through Abraham, blessings of faith, these promises, and really take time to understand what we already have and receive those. We don't have to go out and try to get them. It's already on the inside. You know, I just got back from a, a small meeting conference in Denver where we were doing some real estate coaching. And one of the coaching clients asked the question, like, what do you, what are some things that you would advise us? Or what are some things that you have done to keep a positive attitude and to keep moving through where you know God has called you in this uh, particular situation when you're talking about real estate? And one of the things that I responded, and, uh, and it's right in line with this, is that when you understand if God's called us to do something in this situation, it was real estate, and he's called us to invest, we've gotten clarity on the area that we are to purchase real estate. Um, do you know, we don't have to sit and think about, oh my goodness, will I be successful? There's a confidence knowing that he's already made me successful. He wouldn't call me in to do this real estate in a specific town to set me up for failure. So a lot of times what we see with people as they're pursuing things that they know God has put on their heart is fear enters in and it stops people from actually moving forward into the very blessing and call that God has for their life. So why would somebody be like that? Why would somebody be fearful? I believe a key part of that is a lack of understanding that when we cooperate with God and we move forward in his promises for our life, success is imminent. Meaning that success has already been put on the inside of us. So imagine starting a big project where you already know you're successful. You're able to walk through those uh, steps. You're able to walk through the process with fear out the door. Even when you hit challenges, when we have that confidence that I'm already successful, it's much easier to walk through those challenges. And for me, it really helps me to keep a level head. Now, I haven't always been like that. I actually, in my book, I share with you, I, I really had an issue with fear and I needed to overcome it because I knew in my heart that if I didn't, that I would not be able to do what God's called me to do. And I, I didn't want to be in that position. And I know you don't either. But one of the ways that we can overcome that is knowing that our father is a good father. Jesus died to provide us everything that we need. And he is calling us to something that we can know he will come alongside and help us and we will be successful. We had a situation with one of the properties uh, that we've been investing with that after the closing, there was a uh, backup in the pipes and in the toilet actually, because no one had lived there. And so we didn't find out about it until after the tenant was in. Uh, and we were, you know, it was a, it was a fairly large amount uh, that we had to pay to fix this. Now, I will tell you in probably as, as early as maybe five years ago, maybe 10 years ago, I wasn't ingrained in the confidence that I'm sharing with you today and what I talk about in the book. So something like that, if that would have happened to me, before I had this understanding of success and this, the solid promises of God to help me to move forward into my destiny, that would have thrown me for a loop. I would have been frustrated, full of fear, and it might have even derailed me from continuing down the path of something that God had put on my heart to bring blessing in our life. It's part of what God's called our family to do is real estate. But when this happened, I realized like, you know what? I didn't have any of those like, oh no. One of the ways that you can kind of tell sometimes if you're in fear is you get really frustrated or even angry. You know, sometimes anger 
when things happen can come out of a root of fear in our life. So if you have a temper or you find yourself um, kind of, you know, losing it when things happen and you're not able to assess it, you might want to just ask the Lord to show you, is there an area that I have fear here? Well, anyway, so we, we fixed it. Um, I was calm about it. We just kind of moved right through it. And I realized like, wow, I made a lot of progress because this is not how Karen Conrad would have responded just a few years ago. And really the solution for that is to go in deep with understanding God's character, his love, and the provision that he has made for you and I to successfully carry out the vision, the dream, our purpose in reaching our destiny. I have a special message for you and I'll be back in just a couple minutes. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. My name is Karen Conrad and I've got a question for you. Is your life in transition? If the answer is yes, I know that you are going through a time that can be confusing, difficult, trying to figure out what's on the other side of this and how do I step into that next season? Well, I can definitely help you with this because I have been through many, many transitions in my life. And one in particular was actually quite difficult though I was pretty mature in understanding that my purpose for my life was not going to be disrupted, but it was still hard going through it. This was about two and a half years ago. I was working in a ministry, an international ministry, and I was over several departments and it was going really well. Things were, um, we were reaching goals, things were happening, I was enjoying it. Uh, but something started to change. It seemed like out of the blue with, with no really understanding, things started to get taken away from me. Departments that I was overseeing were being reassigned. I had people literally undermining me and I was able to confirm that, that they were working behind the scenes advocating for things to be moved out from under me. Can I tell you, that's really, really uncomfortable and very difficult. Now, some of it, I thought this has got to be my imagination, which I think we all hope when that happens to us, but it actually was confirmed after that where the person that was behind it came and apologized to me. So it wasn't that I was imagining this, but I was trying to figure out what was happening. Well, during this time, my mentors, Billy and Becky Epperhart, I thank God for them, saw what was happening and they had received a word from the Lord regarding this season that I was in. So they met with me and they said, Karen, we know this is very, very difficult for you, but we want to tell you that we feel strongly that this is a transition time for you. And as you get through it, on the other side is going to be something even better than what you had experienced before all this turmoil broke out with your position and with your job. That mentorship was so critical to me being able to look at things with a lens of faith rather than fear, stop questioning what it was that I was doing wrong and get my eyes on, you know what, Lord, you've got something even better. And I began to recognize with their help that I was in transition. And what happens when we're in transition? It's like a change of seasons, like going from a summer that's very bright, vibrant and green and full of flowers to the fall where leaves are dropping and then into the winter that feels desolate, that feels empty, that just feels like it has a lack of life. I was at that point because God was bringing me into a spring season. Do you know what was right after this season? I met my husband at the tail end of this season. The spring and the summer that he had for me was a beautiful marriage, moving to Texas 
and doing more through my work in ministry than I could have ever imagined. And I want to encourage you that if you are in transition, let's work together and learn about how to look at this time of transition as a time of a pending or upcoming spring for you. Just like I had a mentor, I feel like I can help be your mentor during this season. Click on the link below, give me your email address, and I will send you a link to a free webinar where I will take you through the steps of how to recognize and walk through a season of change. In my book, The Promise of Purpose, we cover this in a chapter that's about living out our purpose. We go from glory to glory. We step into different parts of our life and every one of those times where God has in mind a promotion is a change that can be uncomfortable. But we're gonna navigate through that together as we become one step closer to reaching our God-given destiny. Welcome back. Isn't it encouraging to know that you and I don't have to work up something to deserve the promises of God, that Jesus did it all for us. That just brings peace right there. And that he's equipped us with those promises. He is backing us all the way to help us achieve all that he's called us to do. I'm gonna share some scriptures with you. The first one is in Galatians 3, 13 and 14, and I'm going to read this to you in the ESV. It says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree, so that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, which is you and I, so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. How do we receive this? Through faith in Jesus. That's wonderful. Do you know, even when I um, visit with some Christians or I even find myself thinking uh, in a, in a way where sometimes you'll hear people say that they feel that they're cursed or there's a curse in their family, um, that they, they have actually put in a place of, well, I can't succeed or I can't overcome this problem because there's a curse in my family. Well, that doesn't line up with what the scripture said that I just read. So if you are one of those people that somebody's maybe spoke something like that over you, or you have felt that you'll never be able to attain something because there's this curse that's in your life or in your family, we're just going to break that right now. And we do that through the word of God. And I'm going to repeat this. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who's hanged on a tree, so that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. So I don't know about you, but I am going to exalt my faith in Jesus over anything that would look like a curse trying to come into my life. And what's so beautiful is it's not a promise just for us as individuals. It extends to our family, which includes, of course, our children, and it extends to any area that God has given us authority over. So if you own a business, your business is blessed. Amen. So if you own real estate, your real estate is blessed. And when we know that God's blessings, the things that he has for us, our prayers are yes and amen. It provides us that confidence to walk through things, even when we face some challenges, because we know that we're carrying success on the inside of us. Uh, Now I'm going to read in Genesis 12, 1 through 3 and verse 7. And it says this, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I'll show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and in 
and him who dishonors you, I will curse and you in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. So that is one of the many scriptures that I share in this book about the blessings of Abraham. They received the information about their promise of purpose, their promise of destiny. And part of that promise was to move away from their kindred, but God spoke land to him. And then you know that he also spoke the promise of Isaac, their child to them as well. And if you look back on their journey to fulfill their destiny and purpose, my goodness, they really tried to take things into their own hands and we can learn from that, but just be encouraged about how faithful God was and is today, despite mistakes that we make, he never gives up on us. He never quits. And so praise God, we have everything that we need on the inside of us to fulfill the purpose and destiny that he has in our life. So I have some tools here that will really help you to get this on the inside of you. In chapter seven of the book, I have literally laid out the blessings of Abraham with the scriptures and an explanation of those. So it will help build your faith. So you'll be able to read this and know the promises that are yours. In addition to that, uh, towards the end of the chapter, I took the different um, people in the Bible and just laid out the, the promises that God had given them along with the blessings that they received to fulfill that promise. It really helps, I think, to look at testimonies in the Bible as one big testimony of people. And um, in this, for example, uh, Noah he built the ark by faith, having never seen rain. Isn't that amazing? He was called to build an ark. Can you imagine what sort of a plan or a vision that he was given by God? And how would you even go about creating this ark? Well, you and I have not been called to create and build an ark. And so even in comparison, it was like, whoa, Noah built an ark and he needed God's help with doing that, right? So you and I, in what we're called to do, it is a big dream. It's a big vision, but these promises will help you to really get that courage and that peace about going forward and really fulfilling your destiny with Jesus. And the Promise of Purpose Declarations uh, is part of the Promise of Purpose Bundle. It includes the book, a journal, the declarations that you can speak over yourself. And if you do this as a home group or a group of friends to help encourage you in the way, a bookmark, a cute pen, that says Vision to Reality, and a wonderful mug. And get your bundle today.